guys welcome back to another episode of m crater lore so today what we're going to be working on is a little thing that i came up with uh that will be part of a larger system i'll explain this more in probably the next video when we start taking on actually programming in the uh features and stuff for all these now i wanted to make a like a alternate farmland um model and we're going to have like weeds and stuff, uh, weeds and rocks uh, for the soil, which will impact the yield um, later on. But um, uh, there's like a really complex mechanics that I'll be slowly integrating into the farming part. It's taken me a while to kind of figure out, but um, I got some inspiration from a new game that I got uh, for my gaming channel. And... I thought I would actually give it a try and see if I can't get something up and running. Now, the reason why I'm doing the uh, farmland block and designing it on the, um, the weeds and stuff on this farmland block is because then we can not need to worry about texturing every stage uh, later on for the crops and stuff to have a weed version and variation and stuff like that. So... I know there's this isn't the best way to do it, but um, obviously having textured all of it would be the best approach. But um, honestly, I don't have the time to uh, do all that. Especially there's like if there's like four stages of weeds, and then there's four stages of rocks. You have to like make sure that you have all the different combinations and stuff of those inside the. Um, the blocks and stuff like that for the textures, so it, it becomes a lot of work overall so uh not saying that it can't be done it's just it would be very difficult to do so um outside of that though what we can do is we can go ahead and create a texture for the um i believe i started with rocks first so i just grabbed some stone from the biome or dimension and then i just kind of slowly painted it on some shapes that would look kind of like rocks and then what I would do is uh, eventually make it so there's more and more uh, displays of rocks in the texture and then I basically just kind of textured on some uh, shadows and stuff like that so I wanted to make it as fluent as possible for actually designing like little stones and stuff so I tried to keep to the uh, kind of like direction for the, the light spectrum uh, the light should be coming from the top um, left corner and then kind of down towards the bottom right corner yeah that's about right and um, yeah, I just kind of worked on that, saved a couple stones things, added a few more uh, textures to the thing. I just started playing around with the shapes and stuff like that. Um, this didn't take too, too long to do, but eventually I needed to work on the the um, weeds. So I started working on the weeds pretty soon. Uh, the weeds, I just used the colors from the palette as well. Uh, having a palette actually really helps with... Um, keeping your textures and stuff consistent uh, as you can see that like my palette is very bright in colors uh, those are pretty much all the, the colors that I use for the entire dimension at the moment and I mean minus you know the grass color and stuff those are kind of built into the uh, game itself but um, yeah basically I've just been using a palette for that I've slowly integrated and created and stuff like that some of them uh, some of the colors and stuff branch over and sometimes you need to use a lighter color for the uh, thing so I use like a different palette one and that does just fine like in this case with the grass um, I didn't need that too dark of one but uh, working with a little bit of lighter color maybe a little more saturated works just fine but uh, overall it's uh, this is basically the first one and then I was working on the uh, second stage for the weeds now I wanted it to kind of be consistent and I decided I think in the end to just redesign the entire thing uh, 
this gives it variety as well as you know some difference as so there's not any patterns and stuff so uh, in some cases you might be able to get away with it in some cases you can't like keep it like just copy and paste parts of it but in this case I I was able to um, just quickly test some of the stuff that I de designed. So this is the stage, uh, I believe, four uh, weeds, and then I wanted to see what it would look like with the stones. So this is stage four. So that's basically what it would look like. It might be a little bit darker um, in the game, actually. So we might have to give the block itself some luminescence uh, just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. but. Um, other than that, it looks pretty good. Uh, I just wanted to update the variable names so we knew what all these variables were uh, for the textures. By default, they're assigned numbers. Those are really hard to actually understand which ones are which, so you can just go into the properties and assign the, um, the actual name for the uh, texture and then you can remember what it is in the actual game. Now, I actually only need one of these models because they're all gonna be the same, just with different textures. Uh, we can make an instance uh, for them later on. And basically what we can do is we could just use the same model with it and just update the textures. And this will allow us to make more models of the same type. So basically this is what I'm doing. I was going to just test to see um, what the actual model looked like in the game. So I'm just updating the model for a custom thing and then I'll be testing it in game quickly to see what it actually looked like. So I had to import all the um, models and stuff. I couldn't remember where I put them. Um, yeah, I was having some troubles actually figuring out where I put them. So I was going to do every model instead. And then I remembered that you could just make an instance of it. So I just basically renamed it and set up the textures for the sides, just match the texture names with the ones that I have in the application already. And then we have the weeds. So I wanted to see what, uh, or we had to import the weeds for all these. So I imported those and we needed the stones as well. So I imported all those and then we could basically set those up. Now I'm using the blank ones because I don't want to actually uh, use weeds and stuff for the default one. There's something like 25 um, different models for all these different states. So you can kind of see why I'm, I'm not really wanting to do that for every crop. Um, obviously, if you're going to invest the time into making the crops and stuff, you might want to consider doing it. But this might be an easier method based on the mechanics that I need. So in game, what I'm basically working on now is I'm just testing to see what the crop looks like. Um, you would basically hold the land and then you the weeds would grow over time. Uh, we're going to be hoeing the land for a different reason though. I want to see if the textures align with this block here. So I'm just going to place them down and kind of check to see if it looks like they kind of properly align. It looks like they do. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you might notice that the texture is a little bit faded for the weeds and stuff though. It's not exactly bright. Uh, we can kind of fix this with luminescence a little bit. Uh, like, But as you can see, we can put blocks on top of it too. So that, that will help with our mechanics and we'll be able to make more of an advanced system because not necessarily I want the weeds to happen um, basically when the based on the crop block because when we harvest it uh, that's not going to really matter too much about the crop itself some things like the stones and stuff will also play a, a major role into the yield so this should be kind of identified on the 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 farmland side which is why I'm working with the farmland so I was playing around with some of the settings I was just trying to get the textures a little bit brighter. I wasn't sure exactly what I needed to do, but I started playing around with them a little bit. Um, the transparency part, not a great idea. I try to go with MIP um, for the cutout version and uh, the transparency pretty much didn't work too well. Uh, I did test it in game and it actually made it darker. So the luminescence, um, basically what I'm going to 
do here. I just unlocked the code and I fixed what I what he did. I put it back on MIP. And then I went to luminescence and wanted to adjust this to something like two or three. And I think the end result was I used three for the actual blocks. And you can see it's a little bit brighter now. So that helps. The only difference is when it's at night, it kind of glows a little bit. It's not enough to give off a full light uh, value, but it does make the block itself have a little bit of a glow to it. Um, but it does help with the overall uh, crop thing. Now, when we actually replace all these blocks with the, um, the new ones, like the new crop blocks, farmland like the tilled soil, it'll be a lot better long term. Uh, but at the moment, this is basically what we have. Uh, outside of that, uh, yeah, then the mechanics part will probably come next episode. We'll have to redesign a few things and set up a couple extra blocks. But if you are new to my channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.